In this episode, we are going to be looking at Italy versus Scotland. The teams are out. We're going to be looking at all the selection decisions and who we think will win and why. Hello, amateurs. Welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got everyone's favourite pundit, Elko, with me again today. There he is. Elko, how are you? Hey, TT. I'm good. I'm good. Looking forward to uh, some games after a break. Yeah, good. we hate the break, don't we? We hate the fallow week. Rubbish. Get rid of us. <laughs> Absolutely. OK, before we jump into the selections, where there are some real interesting little pieces there from each team, what do you think about the game overall, Elko? How do you see this one going in general? Uh, well, it's a big Italian banana skin. I think, I think it's a weekend for banana skins. Um, you know, I guess the question is, uh, Do uh, can Scotland, you know, be ultra professional much like um their their big rivals in this have been so far and get over and and do a job or do they have one eye on what might be a decider the week after it's quite interesting they're coming off the back of a massive calcutta cup win um i'm sure there was a few drams um i'm sure they've been celebrating a little bit um after beating uh, england and um yeah, it's an interesting one. They've, they've had a few um, problems with, with, with some um, selections and, and stuff, bringing some new people in, which which is probably will freshen up the squad up, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. I, I, you know, Italy obviously will be the opposite. They'll be, even though they've got an amazing draw, I think they're, they're going to be hurting and be full of confidence. Um, and I, I think... Casada has probably got a lot of ammunition that he can use on an emotional level after what happened in France to go to at a game that we kind of took, spoke um, the other week about that I think they probably targeted these last two games as games they could win. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a battle. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, it is gonna be a battle, and I am really really looking forward to this game. Just apart from anything else, based on the playing styles of both of these teams as well, I think it could be an absolute joy to watch. OK, let's get into the selections. We start with the Italian forwards and uh, our man Ferrari speeds into the front row there. Oh, and uh, <laughs> big Seb Negri, fit again and back in at blindside flanker. Also fit again is uh, the other Canoni brother. But Vincent keeps his place, as I suspected he might after a really great uh, performance last week against France. What are you seeing in these forwards, Elko? Well, it's just great, great to see Negri back. You know, complete talisman. They need him. They need him because it will be a battle up front. Um, and I, I like Ferrari coming in as well. You know, the the the, the second half against France, they, they were good, weren't they? Um, so it, I think if they can if they can cause problems for for Scotland uh, at set piece, you know, we know how important set piece is. We say it every single week. Um, yeah, this could be a bit of a a bit of a scrap, particularly at scrum time. I think with um, I think Schumann will probably be, be, be up for this one as well. So, um, yeah, I'm look, looking forward to the battle there uh, of the front rows. Um, and, and then they've got, you know, the, the Vincent's there again. And, 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 you know, that was clearly a good selection. We, we know he likes a fast track and probably will open up this game. Um, you know, exactly what you said, the, the playing styles of both these teams um, would lead you to believe it to be very open, although I think that might be quite dangerous for Scotland. Um, I think they probably need to keep it slightly tight um, and do what they did against England and, and Hitley, Hitley on um, on turnovers. Yeah, I, just picking up on your point there about the scrum, I think it will be absolutely vital. Fischetti struggled last week against, obviously, the monstrous uh, French <laughs> side. Scotland are a very good scrummaging outfit, but they're not quite killers like that French team are. So, uh, they've gone with the more experienced props to start with the young balls to come on and add energy later. Let's move into the backs. And the big news here, Louis Liner gets his first cap starting on the right wing. Menoncello returning to the centre and Maury is uh, out, out to the bench. Big call. It's a big call. Obviously, Liner's is a very good player. Uh, he's not had... You know, the, a huge amount of rugby this year. He struggled to get in the Quinn side at the start of the season, but he's had a couple of outstanding games since then. Obviously, a bit of time in camp now with Italy, and they see that he's ready to start his first international. Wow, it's, it's oh, what a Casada's got a bit of bed, hasn't he? As a, as a coach, you know, it's it's it's. it's uh, I mean, he only became available the other day, and then he brought him straight into the squad. 
probably was a bit soon to to pick him with the rest of the players. Um, but this is this could be inspired, right? Linus, I think he's a, a you know he's got pedigree, obviously. Um, he's I've seen him a few times playing for Quinns, and he is he's he's a finisher, um, very strong, reads the game really really well, and you know it it, it could be um. It could be the the final part of a, of a of a of a jigsaw that he's been trying to work out. Um, obviously, Menchello coming back in, I think is is good as well. I, I prefer him in the centres. Um, but yeah, that back line looks good. To be fair, it looks like it's got some you know strength in the centres, power, but then you know some some finishing in 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 Capiozzo and, and Lina as well. And obviously, the beast Leone is is there as well. Yeah, and the only player you haven't mentioned there is Pajarello, who I thought was really, really good against France as well. He looks yeah. strong. He looks quick. Again, I think, you know, he could be a step up compared to the other Italian scrum halves that we've seen in this championship so far. So I'm really glad that he's getting another another crack at it too. Let's move on to the bench. And pretty much all is expected here. Uh, although they've gone 5-3, the, the person missing that we've most seen this championship is Zuliani who won the penalty in the final throws of the game against France last week, he's injured. So that's why he's not included. And as such, they've gone for a 5-3 split instead, which, what, how do you make that? What do you make of that? Yeah, it makes, I guess it makes sense if he's injured. And, and yeah, the, 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 going with, they, they probably feel the game is going to be open um, as opposed to a, a sort of, uh, although we've just said it will be forwards, you know the battle will be on the front, but I think it will be open. So he's probably looking at that um, and um, it, keeping his options open for the back line. Um, you know, it it, it will. It, the do we know what the weather's going to be in uh, over there? It's looking fine. It's looking fine. Yeah, okay. this this has the potential to properly open up, um, particularly if one team is 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 down. Um, it, it could probably go wild. So I think it's. I think um, that's probably the right um, balance on the bench, to be fair. Yeah, it looks good to me. OK, let's go onwards with Scotland. And they have started with Andy Christie in the blindside jersey, coming in for Jamie Ritchie. Otherwise, <laughs> all is the same. I mean, Christie, as we've spoken about many times, has been playing outstanding rugby for Saracens this season. Again, it could just be that he needed more time with the squad before earning that starting shirt. Maybe they just look at playing this Italian game, the style of rugby. It's probably going to be from the start and it suits Christie um, more than some of the other players they could have played in that position. What are you, What's your take on it, Elka? Yeah, he's, he, he's more of a, a power player, isn't he? He's more of a, a carrier. Pace. pace. He, yeah. Um, good line out forward as well. He, he, um, the other guy, which he's, he's been, he's been, <laughs> he's in and out. <laughs> Oh, his head must be all over the shop. But um, <laughs> uh, you know they've got Darja obviously over the ball is very good anyway. So maybe they see this being you know they they need more runners um you know to to, to punch some holes potentially um as opposed to you know what they tried to do last week um you know probably because of England's back row is more of a sorry the week before last more of a poachy um feel to it so it, yeah it, it feels like a nice balance I like Christy a lot I think he's a very very good player um but again yeah I think you're right probably too soon and, and he's earned his right to to start and then that doesn't upset ups, upset the uh, the apple cart within the squad in terms of how the players feel about that but yeah I think it's, it's a good a good choice yeah I, I expect this game to be uh, frenetic. I expect it to be fast. I expect there to be lots of running rugby. And I think Christie suits that kind of game. So it makes a lot of sense to me that they picked him. On to the backs. And we are almost uh, exactly the same here. But uh, Horn comes in for Ben White, who has basically been rested because he's played all of these fallow weeks for too long. So he's played a lot of rugby recently. And yeah, needs a rest. But also... Greg has said that Horn and uh, Ali Price, who's on the bench, both very much deserve their chance as well. You know, they've been excellent. So, and Cam Redpath comes in at 12 for the injured Tua Palutu is the other change in this back line. But otherwise, I mean, it's very settled, this Scotland team. It is, it is settled. And, and not not massive surprise. We knew, we knew that Redpath was going to come in with, with the injury there. So, um, it, it doesn't, fit, you know, you don't look at that and go, oh God, you know, that, that it's going to, it's it's going to change. Red Redpath's a great player. He's been playing very very well for Bath, and um, okay, he's slightly 
He's slightly different, um, but he's still very powerful, and they'll use him in in a similar way. He's probably a, a better distributor, so look out for that. I think um, they'll have to, they'll have two two people that can distribute it and and um, maybe split left and right um, in attack. So that that should be interesting. And then the you know um, I like Horn. I think he's a good player. I didn't know that about um, the chap playing in France. That that makes complete sense. Um, and um, you know uh, I, I know. Townsend hasn't been particularly happy with um, sort of losing the players in the follow weeks, but that, that's just the way it, the way it is. But uh, and then you, you look at that back three is is very very good. We know that um, clearly. You know they've got the the absolute beast uh, in Van der Merde, um who who can you know turn anything into a try. So he he'll be very dangerous and probably Italy will have to be very careful around loose kicks and things like that and turnover. So but that, it looks like a really balanced, settled team, and you know. It, you know, fair play to, to everyone's always singing Ireland's praises about, you know, how easily people come in and, and it doesn't look any weaker. That doesn't look any weaker to me. I think it looks like a very, very strong backline. Completely agree. Redpath, we, I mean, we were, I certainly was making the case at the start of the championship that he might have taken that 12 jersey anyway. anyway. So this looks incredibly strong for Scotland and just people slotting in, which is makes it all that much more easier. Onto the bench, and we have uh, almost exactly the same, I think, here, although they've gone 6-2. Um, Greg has abandoned his uh, his sort of policy of having a specialist 10 on the bench, and we've just got Ali Price and Carl Rowe, who we've both been impressed with this championship. Yeah, maybe because uh, red, red path's there, he can, he can flick over, can't he, to 10. So, yeah, it's an um, interesting one. Uh, Miller Mills is still there, we, we, even though we've... <laughs> We've been scratching our heads. He's obviously doing stuff in in in, in training, but it, it looks it looks like a powerful bench, you know. Um, Richie and Ferguson coming on, you know, um, depending on how the game is going. Um, you know, if they want to, if they if they kind of if they're ahead and they want to, they want to kind of slow Italy down. He's he's a guy that can come in and really slow up uh, quick rook speed and things like that. So it look it looks like a a powerful bench, and um, yeah. They look good. Yeah, I mean, the thing I'll say about Miller Mills is he's very much from left field when he first got selected here. But I think he did brilliantly against England and, and against Joe Marler last time out. So WP Nell's not in the squad anymore. Sebastian's come back in to replace him. So, I, I mean, it just seems like he's he's definitely earned it and his, his performances warrant that place. No question in my mind. OK, how do we see this game going? I think... As I mentioned earlier, I think this could be an absolute joy to watch this game. I think both teams are going to try and play. I think both teams are going to try and move the ball. And I think one of the key matchups is going to be the midfield. I'm going to just say all of the midfield, how they manage to ma- manipulate the ball, how accurate they are, I think might be the real key to how this game goes. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I think I think that it will be in the twelves. I think is going to be really really key out of those two players. Um, so you got Melanchello coming back in, but we've after being on the wing, but he's been he's been fairly established there for them during the competition, and, and he's he's up against a, a new kid on the block, and I think they'll go for him. I think I think they'll test that seam. Um, although Scotland have had a bit of time, they knew this was going to happen, so they've probably been doing lots of reps. But I'd still go for that. Um, yeah, I think it will be open. Um, uh, my. I've, I've got a funny feeling um, that there could be a bit of an upset this weekend in uh, Rome. <laughs> well, we shall see. The other, the other one I want to pick up on, the other sort of key matchup, is Liner. His debut game, debut international, and he's got to go up against Van der Merwe, which is uh, an absolute baptism of fire. So, I mean, he's a great player and he's a very good defender. He's a really solid all-round player, Louis wow. Liner, but... I mean, what what a game! What an opponent to have as your first one. Yeah, it's really interesting. I didn't, I didn't. Really, yeah, okay. I, I'm sure they must have come up against each other maybe in, in European, but maybe not. So he'll have to. Yeah, he'll have to be on, on his. Well, you know, Van der is very good at go on, you know, on breaks and going forwards. Um, you know, a brave Italian team would potentially target him with very clever kicking and turn him um, and there's no better man uh, than Liner to, to, to maybe t- to take advantage of that um, he'll just have to <laughs> you 
get, get his uh, get his helmet on because there'll be some big hits. Uh, he's a big old boy, so, but it'll be it'll be a great test for him. And we'll see we'll see what he's got, right? Yeah, and the other thing this Italian team's really good at is actually hitting those scenes and then making the right decisions at the line. And Van der Merwe has sometimes stepped out of the line, sort of found himself in the middle of nowhere. So that could potentially happen as well this weekend. Of course, you know, the opposite could be true. Van der Merwe could get a couple of runs and score a couple of worldies as well, which is one of the reasons why I just think this game could be really, really exciting. Money on the line, no Elko. Who's going to win by how much? Um, well, I think uh, the big battle is actually just think about what you just said there is is the, the two coaches. And you've got two tens going at each other who are very, very different types of players. We've said, we've said a few times in the pod around how we feel that the teams represent their coaches. It's really interesting. Um I, 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 I love Casal as a player. I think, I think he was fantastic. Um, and I, th- I think his teams will be very, very pragmatic. And I think they are, their open rugby that he's trying to get Italy to play is more of an Ireland open rugby. It's more of a st- structure, pragmatic, and then you go. Um, and, he, and he's get, starting to get, we think, pieces of the puzzle with, with Lina coming in there. Um, and because of that, I'm going to go for Italy um, plus six for the weekend. I think they're going to do it. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, that I mean that will uh, absolutely ruin the last weekend of the championship. But um, <laughs> oh, how? will it? Will it? We'll yes. see. Uh, I, I I've gone on record many, many times. I love this Italian team. I love the way they play, and I think that Scotland maybe can't quite get up to the levels that they were in previous weeks. I'm going to go for an Italian win as well. Twenty-eight, twenty-seven. That's my call. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. Oh, the sports will love that. <laughs> anyway, that is what we think. What do you think at home? Have we sort of covered off all the key aspects of these fixtures, the selections, how it's going to pan out, the tactics? Let us know in the comments down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts there. And we'll join you there for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, just leaves me to say, Elko, thanks so much for your time again today. Thanks, CT. Enjoyed it. Speak to you soon. Cheers, mate. And people at home, you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.